Facebook and YouTube. Let's see. All right, guys, can everyone hear me? That is my number one goal. Let's make sure everybody can hear me. So let me know, are you able to hear me okay? Hi, welcome, welcome. Yes, we hear me on Instagram. Awesome. Is it working on TikTok? Great. Looks like it is working on Zoom. All right. Amazing, amazing, perfect. Just what I am wanting it to do. All right. Give me just one second to get my slides and then we will be ready to go ahead and start. I'm so glad all of you guys are here. I know that you are probably expecting Morgan. She was out sick. And the reason we're getting started late is then I had technical difficulties. So getting started just a minute late, but that is okay. I promise that you'll still get your full rapid 30. So my name is Rachel Taylor. I've been in education now for um, just about three years and absolutely love what I get to do. And I've been with Archer Review for two of those years. But let's go ahead and let's get started. All right. So here is our first practice question. Our first practice question, you are the nurse performing education for a patient with AIDS at the community clinic. Which of the following statements is an example of appropriate teaching? All right, I'm going to give you guys about a minute. Let me know when you think you have the answer. Let me know when you think you have the answer. Whoops, let me go back, sorry. My slides went a little crazy there. Take a minute in the chat, let us know. We've got chat support on. We have Sarah with us on Instagram and TikTok and Morgan with us on the other platforms. Look at you guys go, nice job. You are getting it, great work. Perfect, let's take another 30 seconds. Impressive, great work. I'm seeing lots of correct answers. Nice, absolutely. All right, yeah, you can type the answers in the Q&A. The Q&A is gonna be the best place to put your answer for Zoom. If you're joining on anything else, just use it as a comment. All right, guys, so what is our answer here? Well, if we have a client who has AIDS, when it talks about washing your dishes with your roommate's dishes, what's the problem? Saliva. We do not want to share a bathroom with somebody else. We do not want them to share utensils, anything like that. Why? Because they could accidentally spread the disease process. So A is out. I would get rid of A. B, clean all utensils and dishes before reusing them. Absolutely. Why? Because stagnant water and like food particles, those are going to be a really great place for microorganisms to grow. And if they grow, what happens? They're likely to cause infection. What do we know about a client who has AIDS? Do they have a good immune system or do they have a bad immune system? What do you guys think? How's the immune system for somebody who has AIDS? It's not good. So if they get microorganisms, in their system, their chance of an infection is really high because of that deficiency in their immune system. So we really want to make sure we protect, especially AIDS, right? Because that's late stages of HIV. It's progressed now. We need to protect them from illness. So for example, I have a four-year-old, almost five. And let me tell you, when she gets sick, she just coughs all over the place. She's not good about using her elbow. She's just kind of learning that hand washing. It's not her favorite thing. She does it, but not wonderfully. Would I want my four, almost five-year-old around a client who has AIDS? No, because she is likely going to get them sick just because she's not good about hand washing. She's not good about making sure she doesn't spread her germs. 
So because of that immunocompromised state, we have to be really, really careful. Do not use the same shower or toilet as your roommate. Okay, C is kind of tricky. It just says shower or toilet. And that part, that statement in itself is kind of right. But can they use the same bathroom as their roommate? Can they use the same bathroom? No, they can't use the same bathroom. So even though a majority of it was right, they still shouldn't be using the same bathroom at all. They shouldn't be brushing their teeth in the same place. Um, they shouldn't, you know, hang their towels up next to each other in the bathroom. And so it, the answer of C was just not complete. And which tells me B is better than C. You know, for the NCLEX, how in nursing school they used to joke, oh yeah, sometimes they're all right, but there's one that's more right. This is the perfect of example of this. C is kind of right. It's just not the most right. And then let's look at D. Hand sanitizer is not necessary unless you plan on touching someone else. They should be washing their hands like crazy, right? Think about a doorknob. How many people touch a door going in and out of a building? We need to make sure they're washing their hands. Awesome job on that one. You guys did incredible. All right, let's look at our next one. Ooh, this one's a little more in depth here. The nurse is inserting a nasogastric tube. The nurse is correct in performing which of the following sequential actions. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a minute just to think about this one. Once that minute is up, then we're gonna talk it through together. Of what's our first, what's our second, what's our third, and so on. So let me go ahead and put a timer up for one minute. And you guys are ready. Start thinking, what order would you do this in? Looks like several individuals have come on TikTok and let us know that they Pass the exam. Congrats to you. We're so proud of each and every one of you. We love what we do and we absolutely love when we get to hear back from you guys that you were successful. That's amazing. Thanks for letting us know. All right. Welcome for those joining in. We're doing some practice questions together. Let me move this timer just a little bit. All right. Awesome. You guys did it. So let's talk about this. What would you want to do first? If you were going to place this, what would you want to do first? What I like to do is I like to start at the top and kind of work my way down of like which thing makes the most sense to be first. Well, honestly, before I insert anything, before I'm having that client really do anything, I need to put them in high fowlers. Why? Because high fowlers is going to be the best positioning for that tube to actually be inserted correctly. So I actually like the first one the best. So what I would do if this were me, I would go ahead and on my whiteboard, I would put a number one kind of top of my whiteboard. Now let's go ahead and look at the second one. Confirm placement. Well, that sounds to be pretty much near the bottom. So in my head, I know I'm going to place client and high fowlers. Confirm placement's at going to be at the bottom. So what am I going to do in between there? Well, after I get them into high fowlers, I need to measure. And whenever we measure, we're going to start from the nose. We're going to go to the ear lobe. That's really important, ear lobe. And then we're going to go down to that xiphoid process, right? It's going to be that kind of that hard part um, at that sternum. So we're going to measure there. And so when we've measured, then we know how far we need to insert that NG tube. So we're going to take note of kind of that number. Once we have that number in mind, we're then going to insert the tube. Now, before we insert it, what should we do? I know this isn't a step here, but there's something I do after I measure before I insert. What do we think? What do we need to do? before we insert it. Lubricate the tube, you got it. We need to put some lubrication on that tube first. And so we're lubri we've lubricated the tube, we're inserting it. As we're inserting it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually tell our client to swallow. Um, we may even give them tiny sips of water so that way as they swallow, it will advance that tube. 
once I get it in, okay, I'm then gonna, going to secure it at that number that I had measured to, and I'm going to secure it to the nose and to the gown because I don't want it to pull. Before I will start anything with an NG tube, before I hook it up to suction or before I put meds down it, any of that, I need to confirm placement with an x-ray. Not by listening, not by listening to see if I hear air in the abdomen, not just by checking the pH, the gold standard is an x-ray. So we really, really want to get that x-ray to make sure it's in the right place. Awesome job on that one, guys. Great work. All right, let's go on to our next question for rapid 30. And we have a select all that apply. So I want to do this one together. I want to teach you guys what we use for select all that apply at Archer Review. So whenever I get a select all that apply question, I actually love them. Instead of having this attitude of like, oh man, I never get these right because of kind of what we want to do. They're challenging, they're hard. I have found when students go into the attitude of, hey, I've got this, I'm gonna do great on this. Um, when they go in with that attitude, they do better on them. So we're gonna go in with that attitude and then we're gonna follow three steps. The first step is to reword the question in your own words, short, sweet, and to the point. The second step then is to ask yourself, are you looking for true positive statements or are you looking for negative false statements? And then that third and final step is to go through each option choice one at a time. Ask yourself if it's true or false. You choose if you're looking for true, the true answers. If you're looking for false, the false answers. Once you have completed that, you choose your answers and move on. We're not changing our answers here. We're not debating. We're not going back and forth. My best advice for a SATA question is choose what you feel confident in. So the nurse is visiting a patient who's 82 years old, has impaired vision, and lives alone. It would be necessary for the nurse to follow up if the patient states which of the following. Select all that apply. Select all that apply. All right. Let's see how we do here. Let me start our little timer again. All right, I'm seeing several correct answers. Some of you are adding one. Be careful. Think it through. Think it through. Awesome. We have another few people who joined us on social and let us know they passed the exam. Congrats to you. We are so proud of you here at Archer Review. On behalf of the entire team, congratulations. Great work. All right. That's the end of that question. So let's go ahead. Let's talk through this one. So step number one, when I reword this, I want it short, sweet, to the point. The shorter I get it, honestly, the better, as long as I make sure to keep the key components of the question. So here, what I'm thinking about is education when, with someone who has impaired vision. That's really my big concern. There's a fall risk here. So you could even say with a fall risk, what do I want to teach this client? So am I looking at true statements or false statements here? Because it says we need to follow up. Am I looking for true or false statements? This is really important. I would never skip this step. The reason I would never skip it, if you're anything like me, when I get stressed out, when I get anxious, you know what I do? I rush. I go too quickly. And when I go too quickly, I miss key components. And so double check yourself what you're looking for. So here we are looking for false. Nice. Great work. You got it. We're looking for false statements. So let's go ahead. Let's go through this one together. I secured my throw rugs to the floor with tape. Oh, no. Throw rugs. This will always stick with me through nursing school. We don't like throw rugs. Why? They're super easy to get caught up in, to trip on them. Heck, when I was a kid, I definitely tripped on throw rugs at my grandma's house. So there's a big fall hazard. 
So anyone who has a chance of a fall, we tell them to get rid of their throw rugs. Taping them down to the floor is not helping anybody. So A, I would follow up here. B, I switch to using an electric shaver instead of a razor. This is great. Why? Because the chance of cutting yourself with an electric shaver is pretty low. But a razor, that chance is significantly higher. So the problem with this is that we're concerned that they may accidentally, you know, cut their face because they can't see exactly what they're doing. So B is true. I'm not going to choose it. C, I usually sit in a recliner while I listen to the television. There's nothing wrong with this. Great. Sit in a recliner. Get your feet up for a little bit. Awesome. Great. D, I use different shape containers with lids to organize my medications. Again, this is awesome. Here's why. If their vision is difficult, they're going to be able to recognize a shape much better than they're going to be able to read a label on a pill bottle, right? Because they all kind of look the same. So I want them to use different shape containers. I've seen some people use different colors. I've seen some people who actually have a timer thing set up. And at the time they're supposed to take their meds, it will actually open up their pill for which ones they're supposed to be given. Obviously someone has to fill that up for that to happen, but they have some really great systems out there, especially for people who live alone and aren't great at med management. Then we have E, I use the upstairs bathroom instead of the one downstairs. Do we want this client going up the stairs to use the bathroom? No, I would prefer this client probably stay on the same level because going up or downstairs, there's going to be a risk of a fall here and we want to prevent those falls. So the things I'm following up on are A and E. I choose those answers and then I move on to the next one. Do not change your answer. Do I have anyone here who likes to change their answer? If you've listened to me teach, you've heard this a thousand times, but I'm going to say it again in case I have anyone new here. Anyone change their answer a lot? Okay, I've got several being like, yes, that's me. I change my answer a lot. And if that is you, that is totally okay. But I recommend not doing that. If it's you right now, great, but my challenge to you, if you learn one thing from me today, is that tomorrow when you study again, when you start doing practice questions again, you start trusting your gut, you start trusting your instinct, and here's why. If you don't trust it in practice, you're not going to trust it in the NCLEX, and I can almost guarantee you that you are going to have some questions that you don't know when you get to the NCLEX. I know that because if I were to go take the NCLEX tomorrow, I would probably get some questions that I don't know the answer to. So because of that, I highly encourage you to work on the testing strategy of trusting your gut. Don't debate with yourself. Whatever that initial instinct was, follow it. Now, are you going to get it wrong some of the time? Sure, I get it wrong some of the time. When we get it wrong, it's all about what we do understand the why, work to make sure that you knew why you got it wrong and how you would get that material right the next time. Get that content down and then you fill the content gap that you maybe didn't even know you had. And then when you get it right, celebrate those small victories of being like, yes, this is why I trust my instincts because I know it will lead me the right way. Now, how do I feel confident telling you guys to trust your instinct? Well, if you've been in nursing school or maybe you're still in nursing school, you have learned over your semesters in school what to do in certain situations. You have started to develop a nursing instinct. Start trusting it. So the answer for this question is A and E. Those are the things we need to follow up on. All right, here's our next question of a rapid 30. You're working in the emergency department when a 23-year-old woman comes in after being bitten by multiple fire ants. You examine her and notice that there are many fluid-filled bites on her legs and ankles. She's complaining of numbness in her face, and you notice swelling around her lips. Okay, as soon as I'm reading this, guys, red flags are going in my head of, like, what is going on here, okay? She complains of shortness of breath, and her respiratory rate is 28 breaths per minute. You hear wheezing when you oscillate her lungs. Her heart rate is 110 per minute and her blood pressure is 82 over 40. You have the following orders. As you work to prioritize these tasks, you know that the best sequence for doing them is what? Ooh, this is a tricky one.
I am going to go longer just because I started late. So don't worry. We still have more than three minutes left. I'll go at least another probably 13 minutes because I want to make sure you guys get lots of value from being here, especially with me starting late. After we finish Rapid 30, I'm going to tell you about something we've added here at Archer Review, tutoring for students who are still in their nursing program. We have an incredible tutor. Her name is also Rachel, but it's not me. Uh, Rachel Devon, and she is ready to help you guys um, with editing papers, walking through assignments with you, really trying to help you be successful through your nursing program. So at the end of Rapid 30, I do plan to discuss that, show you guys how to book her um, and where to book private tutoring sessions. So stick with me. We'll get to that in about 15 minutes. All right, several of you have gotten this correct. Okay, so number one, what was something you always probably heard in nursing school if you're in school now? Protect the airway, why? Because if my client doesn't have an airway, they're not going to survive. So the first thing that I am doing is I'm making sure that my client has a patent airway. Once I've done that, I'm gonna give epinephrine. Why do you guys think we want epinephrine? What is epinephrine going to do for us? anaphylaxis, right? So what happens when we give epinephrine, it's going to help increase that blood pressure. It's going to help stop the release of what's kind of causing that anaphylaxis. And so we want to give epinephrine first when someone's in anaphylaxis after I've ensured a patent airway, because let's say I didn't do the patent airway first. Let's say I did the epi first. Well, while I'm going to go get the epinephrine, my client loses their airway. Now they're going without oxygen to their vital organs, their brain, their heart, their lungs. Now we've got bigger problems, right? So pain airway first, then I'm going to administer that epinephrine. After I've done that, I'm going to give an antihistamine like diphenhydramine. Really what that's going to do is it's just going to kind of continue to help what the epinephrine has started with. It's going to help make sure we don't have a lot of swelling going on. And once I've done those three steps, then I'm going to place them on a cardiac monitor. Now you're maybe thinking, why am I not doing the cardiac monitor earlier? Well, think about it. Does placing my client on a cardiac monitor do anything to help them in the moment? Does it do anything to help them right now? What do we think? No, it gives me information, which is great. I love more information, but really when we think about it, it's not going to do anything to actually help them to protect their airway, to make sure that they're able to breathe. Okay. All right. We've got another select all that apply question coming up. If you're anything like me, when I was in nursing school, I absolutely hated precautions. They're a lot easier for me now, but let's see how you guys feel on precautions. The nurse is discussing infection control with a group of nursing students. It would be correct to state that the contact precautions with alcohol-based hand hygiene measures should be sufficient for which of the following conditions? Okay, this is a trick question. Start thinking through your answer here. Let's see how you guys do. Somebody said, hey, I need some help on NGN items. I have some great news for you. Next week, Wednesday, I believe at the exact same time I'm live right now. I can't remember the time off the top of my head. Um, I will be live going through all things NGN. So um, our team members, Sarah and Morgan, they have a link so you guys can sign up for any future through April, any future free webinars that we're doing. We've got the links ready for you guys so you can go ahead and sign up for the ones we have available. So they'll be sending those links out in a moment. That way you're able to join. We do also always post on Facebook and typically on Instagram when we are going to do any free webinars, but we do have an NGN one coming up next week. IG and TikTok it is a little less um, regular, but in that a link that we're going to be sharing, that is going to have kind of all of them that we offer. 
All right, let's go through and let's look at this one together. So first of all, there were key words in the question that I need to take note of. The first one is that contact precautions, alcohol-based hand hygiene, because that's going to change what answers we might be choosing. So let's look at the first one, RSV. Well, can we utilize alcohol-based hand hygiene? Yes, we can. Is RSV contact precautions? Yes, it is. I'm saying yes to A, I'm choosing it. Absolutely. B, mumps. Well, what do we know about mumps? Mumps actually requires droplet precautions. So because that requires droplet precautions, I'm going to say no, because why? It's not contact precautions. So B is out. C, rubella, same thing, droplet precautions. C is out. D, varicella. Anyone remember what precaution type varicella is or chickenpox? Good. Wow. I'm impressed. You guys got it. Airborne. Airborne. So airborne is going to be the con or sorry, the precaution type, not contact that we need for varicella until when anyone know when we stop those precautions. When could someone with chicken pox go back to school? When the lesions have crusted over, that's when they typically say that they're no longer contagious. Yep, when those vesicles have crusted over. Nice job. And we do need negative air pressure rooms for that. Nice work. Okay, scabies. Ooh, what do we think about scabies? So with scabies, that is contact precautions, and we can just use alcohol-based hand hygiene. So that is a yes. So, so far, we have answers A and answer E. And then let's look at F, C diff. Well, what do we know about C. diff? It's not just contact precautions. It's contact plus enteric, which means we cannot use alcohol-based hand hygiene. It's not going to be effective. It's not going to work. So instead, what do we need? What do we need instead? You might have to type that link. If it's on TikTok, if it's not letting you click it, you may have to unfortunately type it out. TikTok doesn't always work very well for links. Good, we need them to hand wash. Absolutely nice work. The reason why is alcohol-based hand hygiene will not kill the spores of C. diff. And so if we just use alcohol-based, it's basically like I didn't wash my hands, I go touch something, I'm then spreading that C. diff. All right, guys, let's do at least one more question. This one's really easy. I'm going to skip it because I think it's just too easy. I want to end on a really good one. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and do this one. The nurse cares for a client with a complete third degree heart block and hypotension. The nurse should take which appropriate action? Ooh, this one's a little bit harder. Let's see how you guys do. Oh, and you're all getting it right. And I thought I chose a trickier one. Nice job. Absolutely. Great work. Amazing. For those asking on TikTok, we'll put it on our stories on TikTok. I believe uh, our marketer does, puts it on our stories as well when we have upcoming lives occurring. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you guys here. All right. So let's think about it. Well, when somebody has a complete heart block, they're hypotensive, definitely showing that they are symptomatic here. What do we need to do? Well, within a complete block, this is a medical emergency. What's happened is that electrical communication really between the atria and the ventricles is lost. So what's going to happen is the QRS is going to be doing its thing, right? It's over here, it's beating, it's doing its own thing. And then our, which is our ventricles, and then our atria, our P wave is doing its own thing. And it's going 
at a way different rate. It's not communicating at all. It's kind of like they're coexisting. They're both there, but they're in the biggest fight ever. And they're not talking to one another. They're both just doing their own thing. They don't care to talk with each other. When this happens, um, typically their heart rate is going to be less than 60 beats per minute. And what we're going to see is they're going to become hemodynamically unstable. They're going to become hypotensive. And that means we need to do something. So what this client actually needs is a permanent pacemaker. I want to get them a permanent pacemaker, but that takes time, right? So because that takes time, we need to do something before that. So what are we going to do before that? Well, we're going to set them up for temporary transcutaneous pacing. Now, when we use transcutaneous pacing, what do we think that is? Cutaneous is the skin, right? So we're pacing them through their skin while they're getting set up to probably get a permanent pacemaker, okay? So we're not getting this client wet. They're not taking a shower, a bath with a transcutaneous pacer hooked up. Now, Esmolol, what would that be? Olol, that's gonna be, anyone know? A beta blocker. When somebody has an AB block, we do not give a beta blocker. It is contraindicated. It can be very, very dangerous. The other thing is we would never give a beta blocker when somebody has a lower heart rate. We expect this client likely does. It'd be contraindicated in that scenario as well. Begin chest compressions. Why? There's no indicator to begin chest compressions. Trust me, you don't want to do chest compressions when it's not needed. You're going to break your client's ribs. That's painful. If they are awake and alert, they're not going to like you. And then D, instruct the client to perform the Valsava maneuver. Anyone know when we do this? When do we do a Valsava's maneuver? Typically when somebody has tacky dysrhythmias. So for example, in SVT, I've seen a Valsava maneuver be done. So a lot of times they'll have like a syringe and they'll tell the client to blow into that syringe and try to push the stopcock out. That's trying to get them to do a Valsava maneuver. Nice work. All right. Somebody said, can we please do one more? And absolutely, I think we can. All right. Let me get to another one. This will be our last one. The emergency department nurse is caring for a client with a hypertensive emergency. The nurse should obtain a prescription for intravenous what? All right, last question. I know I said that on the last one, but a bunch of people asked for one more. So this will be the last one. And then I'm going to tell you guys about private tutoring. I'm going to show you our nursing school tutoring. I'm excited. Look at you guys go. Now, extra kudos. Tell me what type of drug this is. The answer you chose. What type of medication is this? All right, let's look at these together. So choice A is dibutamine. So when I look at dibutamine, eh, this isn't really going to be used for a hypertensive emergency. Typically, they use dibutamine when they need to increase cardiac output. So they do that by increasing the myocardial, basically the contractility of that heart. It's going to be helpful in things like heart failure. Um, if they can't handle a vasodilator, that's kind of when we're utilizing dibutamine. Not right here. B, digoxin. Well, when do we use digoxin? Well, I will say dig. It's tested on all the time with the NCLEX because it has a ton of problems that come with it. But because of all those problems, we typically don't give it to that many clients. I haven't seen it a ton in my nursing career, uh, especially in the last few years. So what we see with digoxin is, again, that's going to be for heart failure for someone with AFib. And really what it's doing is it's increasing that contractility of the heart. So that way it improves that cardiac output. Helps really kind of with that squeeze. And then the next option to look at is, let's do the wrong one first, amiodarone. Amiodarone is incorrect. We're going to use amiodarone when somebody has VTAC, VFib, AFib, Maybe they're an SVT, they can't come out of it. Um, not a hypertensive emergency. It's not really going to help here. The reason why is it doesn't do, it's not a vasodilator. It's not going to dilate out those vessels. So our correct answer was C, nicardipine. So when it ends in that peen, 
that depene, I usually recognize, ooh, this is probably a calcium channel blocker. And what we do is we give this as a continuous infusion, and it's really helpful in hypertensive emergencies. So whenever we use nicardipine, it is a calcium channel blocker. It's going to be one of those ones that we like a lot in this situation. All right. Any big questions? Yes, they end in depene. Absolutely. You got it. Any big questions on this one? All right. Let me get my screen situated so I can show you guys that tutoring. All right. Let me get it pulled up here. Give me just one second. So if you go to Archer Review, all right, everyone still see my screen? Hold on, it looks like you're not on Instagram. Let me see if I can reshare my screen here. Give me just one second. All right, there we go. Looks like everyone's seeing my screen, maybe. There, we've got it. All right. So um, what you're going to do is you are going to go to Archer Review Tutors. When you pull up Archer Review Tutors, this link will come up. You go ahead, you click on it, and then you can see all of the private tutoring that we offer. So if you're not in nursing school yet, we have T's tutoring. Our T's team is amazing. If you need math help, Brandon is your guy. He is incredible at math. I've learned so much from him. Um, but if you are interested in that tutoring, that is here. If you are interested in NCLEX tutoring, that is here. We have some incredible tutors. I'm going to highlight Allie here for a second. But Allie is our night and weekend tutor. She does private tutoring primarily, and she is amazing. She is able to really walk you through any topic that you need help in. She can talk about testing anxiety. She can analyze your scores and tell you, hey, yeah, I think you're ready. Or, hey, we better do these things first and then kind of go from there. So Allie is great. She has openings. So if you're interested, check out that NCLEX tutoring. I will show it to you guys in just a moment, but let me kind of look at nursing school with you. So with nursing school, you can scroll down and you can see everybody that is available. So to make sure you know which tutor you're booking, scroll down and it will tell you what they focus in. So Jennifer is maternity. Megan does peds and critical care. If you need peds and critical care help, then we have Brandon, who is our math guru. And if you scroll down, Rachel Devon is the one I want to highlight today. She helps with paper review. She helps with assignments. She's not going to write a paper for you. She's not going to do your assignment for you. What she is there for is, let's say you're totally stuck. You're like, Rachel, I do not know how to get started on this assignment. She will walk you through how to get started. She will write out a timeline of when you should accomplish which task. She can help uh, review your paper and give suggestions, but she's not gonna write it for you. She's not gonna do the work for you, but she's there to walk alongside you to make it a little less stressful. I know for myself, getting started was the most challenging thing for me. Um, I used to kind of struggle with just figuring out, okay, how do I start? How do I make sure I stay on top of things? Right now in my master's program, it's okay, I need to outline, this is what I need to do every day. Otherwise I'm gonna be behind and I won't have enough time to get it done. One of the biggest things when it comes to nursing school is time management. And she is gonna be able to help you with that. So if you are interested, her first opening is tomorrow actually um, at 10 a.m. But she has openings, she can do assignment review, she can help you get organized, she can help you with paper review. So if you are interested, check out Rachel Devon. She is one of my incredible coworkers, really, really great at what she does. Now, for those of you asking, private tutoring, it doesn't matter which division you look at, is $75 per hour. The reason why it's that cost is we do want to make sure that we have quality tutors working for us. Each of our tutors has been hand-selected for this role. And so... They do seem a little more expensive at $75 per hour, but you are getting so much value from them. Students walk away leaving incredible reviews, feeling like they know which steps to take next. Now to show you guys a little bit of NCLEX tutoring, if for those of you who are prepping for the NCLEX exam, you've already graduated nursing school. Then what we have is our NCLEX tutoring. Now the coolest thing about tutoring is you can bundle 
look at what the whole next month is. You can bundle sessions to save yourself some money. So for example, tonight, Lauren offers two mock NCLEXs. Each one is an hour long. You get through about 20 questions in each. So just like how I did rapid 30, these mock NCLEXs are just an hour long of that. Lauren does an incredible job. She is really great at what she does as well. And really the goal of these mock NCLEXs is to help you understand test taking strategies, to help you understand where are you strong, where are you weak, where do you still need to work on? Um, so what I wanted to show you was you could bundle those sessions. So let's say I wanted to sign up for both of those mock NCLEXs, but then I was like, hey, I really need a private tutoring session so I could look. Okay, Emma's full. Let's see if Allie's full. Allie's full. I think all of our tutors are full for tomorrow. Uh, let's see. I have a session of study skills and test taking anxiety. So maybe you really struggle with test taking anxiety. Maybe you don't know how to get started in your studies, whether you are in nursing school or you are going to take the exam. This could be a great one for you. But let me find a private session. So you can see at three sessions, you actually got a 10% discount. But then let's say I wanted to add a private session. So I added this one with Allie. It's going to take 10% off that total purchase. So the more sessions you book at once, you can't like spread out your booking. But the more you book at the same time, the better the discount. When you sign up for five sessions, you're going to get 15% off. When you sign up for 10 sessions, you're going to get 20% off. And you can mix and match between tutors and between types of sessions, small groups and private sessions. You cannot mix though between like nursing school and NCLEX and T's, unfortunately, but um, you can mix and match between the members who are offering the tutor in that division. All right, guys, let me check these chats. What questions do we have at this point? Let me go to each chat, answer any big questions I see. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope you learned something from today. I hope you liked it. What did you guys think? What'd you guys think? Did we enjoy Rapid 30? Again, I apologize for starting late. Did we enjoy this? Let me get that link for you guys in Zoom. Give me just one second and I absolutely will get it for you. Okay, awesome. I'm seeing several people say yes, they enjoyed it. That is great. Free webinars are usually on Wednesdays. I say that because once in a while, Morgan will sneak in a rapid 30 on a Thursday. But most of the time, they are going to be on a Wednesday. All right, let me get you guys that link. Included in this link that I'm sending to everybody in Zoom is also our Farm Crash course. If you need farm help, that is a paid service. It includes our next live review. Again, another paid service. So it includes our things that are free as well as paid. And then it has our social account. So if you're looking for us on social, those are our official social names. So make sure if you follow us on social, there's lots of fake accounts out there. Make sure you get the right one. They're all listed there. But I just put that link in the chat for those of you on Zoom. All right, let me see what other questions we have on social. So let me go to TikTok here for a second. Um, somebody said, what time on Wednesdays? It is different every Wednesday. We go live at least typically once a week. Even if I'm not doing a rapid 30, I try to get live on every social platform at least once a week. If you missed us, don't worry. We have this again next week. I believe next week is at the exact same time as today. And we will be going over all things NGN and it will be a full hour next week. All right, let me see what other questions we have. Yes, you do get partial scoring with NGN. Absolutely. Most item types are going to have that partial scoring. All right, I think I answered those questions. I do not have any coupon codes, unfortunately. Our goal at Archer Review is to be as affordable as we possibly can. So that is something we have really strived for is to stay affordable. We have tons of different plans. Um, if SurePass doesn't work for you, then there is the rapid review combo. So we have lots of different plans and price options so that we can be what every budget really needs. All right, let me jump over to Facebook and YouTube to see if I can answer any big questions. Thank you guys so much for joining. It looks like you guys enjoyed it. I don't see any outstanding questions. All right, and let me really quickly check Instagram. 
All right, I'm not seeing any big ones there either. Somebody said, what is the best package on our um, products? So let me show you the RN. So if you go to RN, what I would recommend is our SurePass combo. So it does start at $159. If you're like, that's too steep, then do a discounted combo. But the SurePass, SurePass, goodness, is the best value for the money. So when you sign up for SurePass, you're not just getting our QBank. You're not just getting over 70 hours of on-demand videos. You're getting study calendars. You are getting live lectures Monday through Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday are live case study focused. And then on Tuesday, Thursdays, it's three hours of live lecture. There's always somebody in the chat support ready to help answer your questions. Um, the other thing that comes with SurePass, my favorite, but I'm biased, is our three-day live review. I'm biased because that is something that I run and I'm on the entire three-day review. Um, not always live. We've got other people who go live, but I'm usually in the chat. And that is the first Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of each month. We do it once per month. It's a 24-hour high-yield NCLEX review included with the SurePass combo. It includes so many things. There's so much value in that SurePass combo. Um, our next three-day live review is March 3rd, 4th, and 5th. All right, guys, if you need, need anything else, you can always reach us at NCLEXTutors at archerreview.com. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you all have a great day. Good luck on your NCLEX, and thank you for being a part of the Archer Review family. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.